Hey, hey everybody. This is Lauren, the Cheerful Baker, and it's dark in here, but we're going to decorate a really cute hedgehog cookie, and that won't be dark, so it's okay. <laughs> so this is one of the cookies from my Cheerful Box, Cheerful Cookie Cutters. It is a cookie decorating kit and the cookie cutters in a box. So you can go to cheerfulcutters.com and check that out if you want to. But let's start the show, shall we? If you have any questions, be sure and um, ask them in the comments, and I'm happy to answer them. So let's go on over to our cookie. Like I said, this is a hedgehog cookie. I'm doing watch doing a video because I want to be able to talk through some of the things. Um, so. This is a hedgehog cookie. It's the hedgehog is super cute. The way that I did the outline for the hedgehog was with a um, with a projector. But I used to teach kindergarten art, so I'm going to tell you how I would look at this and break it apart so it would be easy to draw. I love to draw on cookies using Chef Master edible markers. They work great for drawing on naked cookies. So if we're going to break this design apart, what I always do is I try and look at the shapes. So the bottom part, can you all see me when I move my mouse? Can you see the mouse moving? Somebody uh, tell me, because I'm really, really curious about that. <laughs> but I look and I see, okay, where, based on the clip art, where would I want the bottom of the hedgehog to start? And I know his little feet are in these little cutouts that are down here that are actually part of the cookie cutter. Then his little body is the shape of a smiley face. So I'm going to go down a little under halfway to the cookie because this middle part is approximately halfway. You know, there's his head and his body are just about the same size. So I'm going to know that I need to start a little bit below where his scarf is. And all I'm doing is drawing a smiley face. Can you all see my mouse moving around? Somebody tell me, I'm very curious. Next, after I draw the smiley face, which is his, his body, I'm going to draw a little sideways smile. And then right across from it on the right, I'm going to show, oh, you can't see it. Okay. Right across, you're going to show, you're going to draw his arm. He has one arm that's sticking up. Then above that, you're going to draw a smiley face the opposite direction. So a frowny face, you're going to draw a frowny face with two little ears. So if you look at the design and you break it into smiley faces, curves, and frowny faces, you will be shocked at how often that works. <laughs> That's how I used to teach my kindergartners. So again, you could use the clip art that comes in the cheerful box or um, for this cookie or whatever design, if you don't have clip art to follow and you, or you don't have a projector, I should say, then try the little trick that I just showed you. Now, I'm going to next, I'm going to take, this is a very light brown piping icing. And you'll notice, now I sped this up just because it. I think it was too long otherwise. So this is twice as fast as I would normally do it. But you'll notice that I'm using the piping icing and I'm just going around where I drew on the cookie. And when I pipe, I hold the bag tip just a little bit above the cookie. I allow the icing to fall out and then I drag it behind my hand. Now this is my flooding icing. And when I flood, I start at the edge of the cookie and I just go all the way around. And the reason I do that, let me pause this. The reason I do that is I really don't love for you to be able to see the piping line. And sometimes you, you can see it. But by doing the flood right next to the piping line, immediately after I've done the piping line, it kind of covers that up. You'll also notice when I'm filling this cookie, I make it really good and full. Um, I don't want cookie showing. And I also don't want to have to use something to spread this icing out to cover any cookie that's showing. So I'm really, I really put a lot of icing on here. 
Next, I'm going to use my scribe and all I'm going to do is wiggle the icing into place. I'm not spreading it. I'm just using a circular motion and I'm wiggling it. Because once I do that, the nice thing about royal icing is it settles out. Then I'm going to allow this cookie to dry. I want there to be some differentiation between the cookie itself or the hedgehog body and the sides. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to do that with piping icing. I'm sorry, with dry time. So I'm going to let the body of the hedgehog dry until it's no longer shiny, until it has a matte finish, which would take about 10 minutes. If you had a fan, you could put it in front of a fan. If you have a dehydrator, you could put it on your lowest setting in the dehydrator. Um, that usually works best. I'll do the body, then I'll go get a drink of water, and then by the time I come back, it's ready to go. Also, if you all have any questions, I would love to answer them, or tell me where you're from. I always love to see where people are watching from. So next, I'm using my brown piping icing to go around, and just so you know, I use the same icing color for these two colors. Um, I just put barely any brown in the icing and that got my very, very light brown. And then I added a little bit more color and that got my darker brown. So let's keep going. I also love to use tipless bags because I do not like to wash bags. And my favorite tipless bags are from Sinful Cutters. Although I just got some in the mail today from the Sugar Art, so I will be excited to use those. Now, because this is a small area, I'm actually using pipe flooding icing right there. Now, I'm going to go around with my flooding icing, and because this is sort of its own little area here, I'm going to fill that in first, again, wiggling with my scribe into place. Then I'm going to go around the rest of the cookie. And when I fill an area that's right next to some an area that I've already flooded, you'll notice that I start by squeezing the icing towards the icing that's already down. So I'm just going to fill this in. Hedgehogs remind me of fall. Is it fall where you all are? I'd be really curious to know. It's I'm in Kentucky and it's still hot. I have on long pants today, you know, jogging pants and a sort of real lightweight sweatshirt. And uh, not sweatshirt, but like exercise shirt. Because, you know, maybe I'll exercise today. And I went out. I was actually hot, but it was cool this morning. Oh, Yolanda. Is that how you say your name? Am I saying it right? You're you're watching from Louisiana. I just interviewed the Dosha Mac from Louisiana for my podcast. Now, let me explain this to you. I'm not doing this immediately after I flooded that cookie because while the icing flood is still wet, this piping icing that I'm putting on top, all it would do was sink into the cookie and that would completely lose the effect. So again, I've waited till this dried probably 15 minutes uh, before I do that on top. Now, if you do, don't want to wait, I was thinking what would be so cute are, you know, the brown sprinkles that are really long, you could put those right into the icing while it was still wet. So I think that that would be cute too. But you'll notice I'm just creating, you know, I keep saying hedgehog. Maybe this is a porcupine. <laughs> What's the difference between a hedgehog and a porcupine? I really don't know. I got to Google that. I can tell you whatever you want to know about horses and dogs. <laughs> and that's pretty much it. Let's just call this a fall character. What do y'all think? Is this a hit? What's the difference between a hedgehog and a porcupine? Can someone please tell me? Maybe it's the same thing. So that gives our little character some more character. Next, I used my piping icing 
to go over to make his little nose area. Now, after I did this, I wasn't thrilled with, do you see how high that is, the piping icing? I don't really want it that high. So I actually scraped this off and do it again with flooding icing. My flood is a little bit thicker, so I don't really have to worry too much about cratering. Now I'm going to do his other arm. I'm doing this with piping icing. Then I'm going to fill it in with flood. And I just put it underneath where I know the scarf is going to be. And I want it to be about the same size as the arm, as the other arm that's sticking out. Next, I'm going to take my really pretty orange piping icing. And I'm creating the outline of where I want the scarf to go. And one thing I want you to notice here is the scarf, the right hand part of the scarf is above the actual scarf around the neck because you want it to look like it's tied on or it's flipped around, you know, that the scarf is just tied. So if you don't put it near the top as well, it's just, it's going to look weird. So you really got to think, how would a scarf look if it was tied on a real little critter? <laughs> so next, I'm going to take my flood icing and I'm going to do the top. And then I'm also going to do the little triangle. Because the triangle is not touching the top. Has anyone looked up for me or can anyone tell me the difference between a hedgehog and a porcupine? Then I'm going to let this dry for about 10 minutes and then I'm going to, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't let it dry. Forget I said that. I'm going to take red and I do, I use red piping icing because I want to make sure not red, green. I, I thought about using red and then I decided that green would be cuter. I just made this cookie the other day. I have the world's worst memory. So I'm using piping icing and it's going to sink in a little bit, but it's mainly going to stick up. You can do it real soon after, after you do the yellow or you can wait a little bit. So you'll notice here, I did that around the neck and then I also did it on the long piece hanging down and the other piece. So do you see how it looks like the scarf is um, looped through? That's how we want it to look. Now, this next part, you want to make sure that your cookie has dried for at least an hour. I mean, at least a day. Um, because if you try and do this that we're going to do next, and your cookie's not completely dry, it'll punch through. So what I'll do is I'll make my characters and then I will leave them until the next day and then I will draw the details on them. My favorite detail lining um, pen is called Tweets. A Tweets cookie connection are the best pens. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to draw my eyes. And for some reason, I find it easier to start the one. It's easier for me to draw a smiley face than it is to draw a frowny face. And then I'm going to fill in his nose with the pen. And next, I'm going to use this sterling pearl from the Sugar Art, and I'm going to make cheeks. There he's done. Isn't that a cute cookie? I hope you'll. And if you are watching on the replay, um, ask me questions. I'll be happy to answer them. If you want to get him along with the rest of his friends, so cute, such a cute set. It's a surprise set and it ships on Friday. You can go to cheerfulcutters.com and just search for the cheerful box and you can find out all about it. Um, right now, the photo that is up is Halloween 
And we did that because um, we don't want to show you the photo of what's shipping next week. We always do it as a surprise. Thank you for saying that. <laughs> I said, I said so many wrong things. You know, I said, we're using red. Oh no, we're using green, but that just happens. And today is a busy day, but I want to try and do, do this more often. So, um, any questions about cookie decorating? Anything I can help y'all with? Well, if you're watching on the replay, feel free to ask. And I hope you have a cheerful day. Bye.